Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yi. I'm Chris Yi. I'm Z Garcia. And today we're taking a look at a two-player trick-taking game from All Play called Sale. Um, Sale is a two-player cooperative trick-taking, which is kind of a mouthful of itself. Mm -hmm. Trick-taking for many years has been the domain of four players only, or three at minimum. Now it's two players, sometimes solo, but this one is only two players, and you need to get that chip in there. It also has, in my opinion, one of the nicest covers I've ever seen in a game. Mm. But let's take a look at the game, and we'll be right back. In this game, you're going to build a scenario, and the game comes with a learning scenario, and then one through five. And you need to get your ship all the way to the end here. And so you'll notice that each of the scenarios, that end point gets farther and farther away. But there's also islands that you can't move into. And there are tentacles that if you run into them, the Kraken does damage to you. And then you'll have storm clouds and you need to be past them by a certain round. You're gonna keep track of your rounds. So by round three, you need to be past the first set of storm clouds. By round five, you need to be past the second set of those storm clouds. So that is the goal of the game, but the mechanics of the game have to do with trick taking. Each of the two players is going to pick a special power that you're gonna use, and these powers are going to affect players throughout the game. On the other side of the card, it shows like a, an icon of what the, the power does. The game's gonna take place over five rounds. Each round player is gonna keep track of the number of tricks that you've won, once you won four tricks, the round will end. So if one player wins four tricks, that's gonna end around pretty quickly. Nine cards are gonna be dealt out. There are three suits of cards, and the cards go from one to nine. However, the ones and twos are separated out in a special damage pile that's put on top of this Kraken pile. At the beginning of a round, each player is gonna simultaneously and secretly pass a card to the other player. After that, players are gonna take turns playing a trick, which means one player plays a card and the other player, if they have that color in their hand, must also play a card of that color. If you don't, then you can play any cards you want from your hand. Once players have done that, you are going to compare the pair of symbols that you have there. If both of the symbols show a wheel on them, then you, the, the ship is going to move towards the player who wins the trick. Now, if one of the sails that is played also shows a tentacle on it, or both of them show a tentacle on it, the ship will still move, like I just said, but you also take one damage. What damage does is you'll take a card off the top of the damage deck and put it in a discard pile. And you'll notice these also have tentacles on them, so they'll add more chances for damage. Once you get to the Kraken card in the damage pile, you're gonna take even more damage, and then this token will move up. You'll lose the game if it gets here. You also lose the game if this Kraken card is the only card in that deck. If one player plays a cannon card and the other person plays a tentacle, good news, the ship doesn't move, but this card now is removed from play and placed on the bottom of the damage deck, which makes the damage deck last longer, although as you get damaged by the Kraken, this card can come back into play. If both players play cannon cards, then you will turn over the top card of the cards that were not dealt out and something good will happen to everybody. Like this will move the ship, something good will happen. Then if there's also mermaids in the deck, however, there's only one of each color. And if you can manage to play two of them in the same round, the ship will move straight forward one. Now again, remember the ship can't move into islands. If the ship moves into a tentacle, you take a damage. And that's pretty much the game. Once one player has won four tricks, you'll shuffle, go through another round, and you need to have gotten to the end spot here on the board by the fifth round. At the beginning of this, I talked about how great the cover looks, um, and the pirates, I think, look great. Uh, Weberson Santiago does a good job. Yes, absolutely. I'm less enthralled with the cards. The purple-pink combo and the wispy font I didn't find to be particularly easy to read. It's three weird colors they picked for a, a game that has three suits, and they already have a color palette here. That purple and pink is nowhere else. It's kind of weird. The, the pink and the orange are so similar that they're hard to tell apart, but you can tell by the background of the card color. Yeah. So do you use the suit color or the card color as the color you 
You I, say? I mean, you never communicate in the game, so it's not like... You're supposed to use the card, the, the, the car, color, the number, because one of the pirates' power specifically says an orange mm, wheel or whatever. That's true, wheel. that's true. Yeah. I think I, that's how we discovered it, that there were different colors initially. I didn't, I didn't realize yet until when his player power was like, orange wheels, you get to choose. And I was like, that's cool. Where's, oh my goodness, these are different colors. So I, th I found that odd. I don't know if it's for um, colorblind friendliness, perhaps, or something. They also did, on the one index, uh, the top left of each card has a different shaped banner for right. colorblind friendliness, mm -hmm. which I thought that's a good move. I almost thought it was, I thought it was almost too subtle. I think it was hard to kind of see it right away. Should have been in all four corners. I agree, or at least the, at two, least the opposite two opposite indices. Yeah, because yeah. then you're constantly moving your cards up and down if you shuffle them wrong. And right. Yeah, now, I think card quality though. They're very good card quality. Yeah, I'm being, very easy say, to I'm, shovel. I'm being nitpicky here. Yes. Yeah, no. they're, they're right, and the game looks good. It's really fast to set up, and it does some subtle things I enjoy, like the the round tracker. Whoever it's closer to leads off in the round. Mm -hmm. That's small, but it makes it so much easier to remember. Like who who went? Oh, it's you, you lead off. You right. lead off. Here's the clouds you have to get by. Like, it has all that information right there. And I also like that the player powers had text and yeah, symbols. Yeah, you flip it over, it has a symbol, yeah. <laughs> I That's use a cute. text from my, uh, from my end, but, I mean, if you want to use symbols, they're there. I think subtle is a good way. That word you said is, is a good descriptive for this entire game, actually. I think the game is very subtle. It's like a micro game in some ways. It's very subtle in some ways. There's no communication, no open communication, so you have to do that whole, like, I'm going to pass you a card. I hope you know that that means that I know that when you play this, I will be short-suited or I will play this. It's very, very subtle. This is one of those games that's going to build a meta communication over time. Yeah. And so it'll be weird, I think, to play this with a person regularly and then switch to a new person and be like, oh, you don't know all the rules. Like, why did you give me that card? That was completely oh, wrong that's information. True. Yeah. So, like, I could see getting frustrated with that, but you also wouldn't want to introduce a new person to be like, here's all the ground rules for communication. Oh, that would just be too that. much. But, yeah. But the game does say there's no communication while you're playing, but in between rounds you can talk. Mm -hmm. So you could say, if I pass you this color, that means I'm trying to get rid of that out of my hand, although that's a typical... Or this is what I meant by anyway. that card I gave you. I don't want bridge level of communication. Mm -hmm. If I give you the orange six, it means da 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 da. <laughs> I'm like, no. Now, we were talking about this a lot, me and Z, with the, the card counting in this game. Because card counting is difficult in trick-taking games. Some people are very good at it. I, can, I usually semi-count one color <laughs> when I play a, a normal trick-taking game. Um, but in this one... You know that if you don't have the cards in your hand, you're allowed to look through discard piles at any time. And the, and the Kraken... Um, Kraken deck or whatever. Deck, yeah. the, the, the damage pile. So if I don't have my hand, you have it in your hand except for a few cards that are in that deck. Mm -hmm. And if those cards are revealed, or at least one or two of them are revealed, I know even more information. Mm -hmm. So you really do better if you sit there and go, you can't communicate, but you know a lot of information in this one. You know a lot, even when the cards, uh, the undealt out cards are still face down. Uh, I like that. You know that, okay, the crack and damage pile on the side is pretty thin. Okay, so it's it's more diluted with those uh, wheel and tentacle cards. Right. Or mm -hmm. we've tucked a lot of them over there, so there's pretty much going to be zero ones or twos, almost maybe even no threes left at this moment. So, yeah, you can figure out a lot, even just based on the opening deal and the status of that crack and deck. It lives right on the edge of fully perfect information, where mm -hmm. you have maybe three cards that weren't dealt. So you're almost there, and then if you burn through a couple of those, you are just on the on the cusp of it. I mean, so and you can deduce the last card sometimes when you play something, and the response should be obvious. But it isn't the card you expect. You're like, aha! Mm -hmm. I know what that one is over there. Now I at least have perfect information. And I'll say the first game of this that you play, and I pro I would recommend they give you a uh, tutorial scenario. <clears throat> Go ahead and do that. Yeah. Because it's a weird, it's a weird first game, and before you figure out like, oh, when I pass you this card, 
I'm thinking this, and you passed this, thinking that, and then just kind of those responses and stuff. Like, until you figure that out, you probably want to play that short level. Yeah. Because you'll, you'll kind of stumble over your first player or two. And then it starts to kind of, then you, I don't know, get into your partner's mind pretty, pretty, I don't want to say easily, but pretty well. Mm-hmm. I like that it has that health deck that you have that you need to feed because you can feed it any time. You can go the whole first round and survive without it, but then you're playing that catch up the next round of are we going to make it through this round without having enough health cards in the end. So I really enjoy that push and pull balance that way you can't just like speed to the end, but you could end the game a few rounds early if you are able to jump ahead and kind of rush towards the end. So I think there's a really cool balance that you have to decide together quietly, separately. Um, as to whether or not you're going to rush that ending. And so I think there's yeah. some cool decisions there. Yeah, it's the balance between not having that deck run out. Like you say, you can feed it, but if you're doing that too much, you're not making it to your cloud checkpoints. Mm-hmm. So it's between those two. Run ahead, but fuel the tank. Yeah. And that's that's an interesting push and pull there. And sometimes it's a little out of your control, honestly. But, but honestly, and I like the game, and I think it's very, very strategic, very thinky, there's a decent amount of luck, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Especially, it basically just the dealing of the cards. You can get dealt really well cards. And in this game, if you have a strong beginning, it's awesome. If you can cut out some of those damage cards from your deck early, then you get less damage cards. On the flip side, if you take some damage early in the game, the damage compounds, you could almost halfway through go, we ain't going to make it. Yeah, we're going to reset. It's, you might as well just reset at that point. because mm-hmm. and, I've, and I've seen both. You know, that's... Because this game definitely is a ball that just keeps rolling, and after a point, you're like, oh my word. You know, we're, we're struggling just to throw some cards in that damage pile just to keep us afloat. And that's, but, uh, but if you can get those damage cards out early, you then take less, and if you somehow manage to avoid the tentacles in the water, then you're like, man, this is easy. You can have a really easy game of it yeah. or a really mm-hmm. difficult game. Yeah. I, I, there's a lot of small little cell touches that make it fun. That idea of kind of sailing around. I, I wish that there was almost a little bit more on the map that you could kind of throw in there because there's islands that block you and then the tentacles that damage you. And, I, and it feels like, oh, okay, I kind of wish there was like one or two other little things that as the level, as you go from level one to two to three or four, like... There's probably a little expansion to have that. I was like, do you want to run into mini games? Like, <laughs> ooh, you run into a whirlpool. Now roll some dice and see where you get spit out. Like, that kind of thing? I don't know. It's just something, uh, that, something that still lives in the trick-taking. No, world. I agree. I agree. That sounds good. I could definitely see, like, oh, he sailed into a little atoll, and I can pass a card to you, and you give me one back. Mm, but that kind of thing. Out of like, the way, yeah. Yeah, I could see that little stopping point that, yes, you're avoiding uh, krakens, and you're avoiding running into islands. You can't do that, but... Yeah, some things to go through to open up the game a little bit. Maybe optional little things. That would be neat. Because it is very... It's interesting. It has this... The 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 curve is very dry when you first play. You're like, gosh, this is very dry and mathy. And then you understand the game. You get into it. And then it becomes more fun and playful and thematic and piratey. And when you get good at it, you're back to dry. And card counting... And just brute force trying to get into your opponent's head, trying to figure out what those two cards that are left over there face down are, spreading the rest of them out on the table and going, okay, one, two, the three's there, the four is there, the, the five you have or it's there. That's it. It's just pure math, right? Counting one through nine three times, boom. Um, so I agree, a little more flavor would have gone a long way. I'm giving this game a 7. I, I enjoy it. It has Wisps of the Crew, which is a game I really like, a co-op, uh, cooperative trick-taking game. Although I love that one more. I like that that one's more of a traditional trick-taker. This one has a lot more going in. There's a few things, minor things, that keep me from loving the game, but I, I, I find it to be interesting. It's, it's definitely an interesting back and forth. I, I guess the, the main reason I'm not putting like an 8 or 9 is because... I don't want to keep playing it over and over again. I can play it a couple times and I'm good for a, a good chunk of time. But I do applaud it. I think it's neat. And I think if you like trick-taking games, if, especially if you're like a couple at home and you love this sort of thing and you wish you had a trick-taking game for two people, bam, here you go. Yeah. 
What about you? I'm giving it a 7.5. Uh, I have a couple of issues with it, the color of the suits being one of them. And like I said, just a lack of flavorful, flavorful banter. You can't do that, right? So you're missing that out right there because you can't communicate. I think it could be a little more lively, perhaps. But the look of the game, the artwork, not the suit colors, the artwork is lovely. I do like the setting. And I do like this idea of a two-player cooperative trick-taking game. I think playing with the same person a lot, like Wendy said, is going to liven that up, too. You're going to be able to, you know, figure out how you're syncing up. So, I enjoy it. You're right. Not revolutionary. Uh, not one that I'm going to continue coming back to. But I liked it. Uh, I would be happy to play it again. So, 7.5. I'm also going to give a 7.5, but I think like a little higher of one. Or like a little bit more, uh, you know, you know I'm here right a little bit more lively. No, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. I don't know if, it, like you said, that I don't know if it's going to be one that I come back to time and time again because I feel like all the maps are the same arc. You're just spreading it out longer. Mm -hmm. So you're just going farther. You're not necessarily exploring new things. Um, but I did really enjoy that communication. It's funny that you said the better you get out of the drier it gets. And I'm that's where I think the interesting side of it is. The, the pirateness to me is like, okay, cool, there's tentacles theme. But for me, it's the... How do I see what you have? How do I think what you have? What are you going to try to do? I'm going to play this and see, is this the moment that we both are going to play our mermaids? Like, can we do it? And I, I enjoy I those moments. Yeah. As many mermaids out there as you can. So I think it's a lot of fun. I'm also coming to 7.5. I, I mean, uh, go team. We all did it right except for Tom. <laughs> <laughs> messed up, man. I hate the game, apparently. <laughs> apparently. No, it's fun. It, it's, I, I would agree that this box size this uh, small setup scope and everything like that, it's a good one to have on the shelf and to pull out every once in a while and say, you want to try and get into each other's heads again? Cool, let's do this. Uh, is, it, is it the trick-taking that's going to define the genre for the, for the ages? No, but, it's a, but it does something different from a lot of other ones. It gives you that fun map, tactile uh, kind of you know, ship movement going on. There's some really neat decisions with it. And I think one of the best parts is that sliding card to each other. I think that is where all, all your communication comes from. Uh, a lot of your excitement when you say, ooh, I got this, I think I know what you're throwing down, and then you kind of play it out. Like, that's the moment where the game has the most uh, interest, and then you play out the hand, all right, cool, all right, how are we doing? Are we past the clouds yet? Are we, uh, are we sailing towards a bunch of Krakens? How do we course correct? But, uh, yeah, I, that one little card pass, great. Yeah. Well, there we go, folks, that's Sail, just released from All Play, two-player trick-taking. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Z Garcia. And we're all working together, well, in our own separate games. Are we all pirates? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>